Hello and welcome to The Print. Today, we have the honor of having with us Dr. Rohit Srivastava, who is the, one of the first recipients of India's top science honors, the Vigyan Awards. Dr. Srivastava, who is a professor at the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering in IIT Bombay, has previously also received the Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Prize in 2021. And this year, he has received the Vigyan Shri Award by the Government of India. Dr. Srivastava, thank you so much for being with us here. Let me start you off with a very simple question. Could you talk a little bit about your area of expertise um, and your work in affordable health care? Thank you very much for the invitation to talk a little bit about what we do at IIT Bombay and how this impacts uh, India's healthcare space. So a warm welcome to all the viewers. Uh, I've been working at IIT Bombay for the past 20 years now. Uh, when I joined IIT Bombay, uh, biomedical engineering was in its nascent uh, phase. And there were very few, I'll say biomedical engineering scientists in the country because this field was interdisciplinary and many people did not really understand the impact of this field. Over the last 20 years, we have uh, been working not just with engineers, but with medical professionals to build up on ideas that can go all the way from lab to market. Now, this is the biggest impact that this field can have. And let me give you a short example on this. So many years back when I had joined IIT Bombay, uh, an MTech student joined my lab who wanted to work on real life problems. And I said, let's not just work on papers and publications and conferences. Let's work on creating a medical device that will not only help the country because it will uh, bring an affordable technology to the market, but will also help us in being self-reliant. So with that in mind, we started working on finding a need for a medical device, which led to us looking at various uh, healthcare labs in the country, you know, in and around Mumbai and Thane, and looking at uh, problems that these labs were facing. The first need that came to us was how we could uh, miniaturize what was being done in these pathology labs and make it into a point of care device. That's how this whole Research started in our lab in 2010 and building upon that, we were able to create our first mobile phone based diagnostic device, which we called UCheck. And this UCheck was as smart or as efficient as a Siemens Clinitech machine, but was at least one fifth the cost of a comparator device in the market, which meant that it could be used in all the labs and it could actually have a wider impact than what was currently being done in this country. With that in mind, we started working on many, many other technologies. We came out with our own indigenous glucometer. We also um, released this product in New Delhi in 2013 in a very big function organized by the, uh, by the central government. And these glucometer and strips were available in the Indian market at less than five rupees per strip. Imagine a diabetic who has to check himself you know, four to five times a day because he's on insulin uh, cannot afford an 18 rupees strip even today. These glucometer strips, which were made available to the Indian population at less than five rupees, made a huge impact in this country. With these two products and many more that came out of our lab, we were able to establish ourselves and our lab at IIT Bombay as one of the most premier labs in the country doing translational research. Mind you, this term uh, was coined uh, very, you know, very recently because the government wanted to focus on technologies which could go from basic research into the market, you know, research which had already happened into the lab, into which you could add a little bit of technology, you could add a little bit of clinical studies, and then see how that technology could be you know, brought into the market. And that's how translational research uh, was being coined. And then many, many, many people across the country started working on translational research 
today I'm proud to say that what we started out in our lab at IIT Bombay has now taken uh, wings and has actually gone into several labs in this country where many people are doing translational research. That's great. Um, thank you so much for that, Dr. Srivastava. Now, let me just bring to our viewers notice that um, your award, the Vigyan Shri Award, you received it in the technology and innovation category, which is quite interesting, um, you know, given the fact that you are a professor in IIT Bombay, and as you explain how um, a number of your innovations have been brought to the market. I just wanted to bring you back a little and ask you, how did you find your niche in this field? going from uh, your studies in India to then moving to the US to then coming back and working in IIT Bombay. What was the process of finding um, exactly what you want to do in this field, which combines science with technology and innovation? I think that's a wonderful question, you know, at least for the students who wish to pursue research uh, in this domain. I'll start off by saying a little bit about what I did. So I completed my Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics Engineering from BRC Nagpur. And when I completed the engineering part, I could get a job in one of the uh, leading, uh, you know, sort of you know, software consultancy firm. That meant that I had to leave my field behind and start doing software, which was not really my forte. Now, this is where one needs to decide what one's passion is. And if you really pursue your passion at that point, you would end up doing what I did. So I went off from there. I said, I don't want to do this. I would really like to take my background and see how my background in engineering can be made use for the country. Now, in order to work for the country, it is always better that you get a degree, uh, a higher uh, you know, degree in the same field or a related field, either from your own country or from you know, somewhere outside. I chose outside because I wanted to see the flavor of, you know, how things were being taught uh, outside the country. So I came back uh, to India after completing my PhD in biomedical engineering from Louisiana Tech University in Ruston, uh, USA. And when I joined in IIT Bombay, I had no postdoc experience. So, you know, imagine a, a fresh PhD graduate coming back to this country, having no postdoc experience, starting in his, his own lab. This was the postdoc that I did in IIT Bombay because I knew that what I really wanted to do would pave the way for not just me, but for many, many students who join my lab and go on to do similar things. My training to these students has focused on them being independent in their approach in the sense that you have to use your background. If I came from an engineering background, I would like to use electronics engineering and engineering degree combine it with the medical field and see how I can create medical devices with this background. Similarly, you know, I have pharma people in my lab. I have biotechnology students in my lab who use their background with either drug delivery or, you know, uh, a cancer uh, therapy or, uh, you know, many other projects that we do in our lab, point of care diagnostics, microfluidic projects, which means that one has to really think about what one wants to do in life before one takes that leap into academics or into industry. So with that, I hope that I have given a little of bit of flavor into how I came into this field and how I would like to move forward. Of course, that was very well put, uh, Dr. Srivastava. Now, let's take a step back and look into the broader, um, you know, the atmosphere itself in this country. You know, as you know, science and technology has definitely seen a huge push in India in the past few decades. And I think especially after COVID, you see um, even the general public taking a larger interest in, um, you know, the combination of these two fields. Um, especially related to healthcare, which is your uh, specialty. So I wanted to ask, have you seen that difference personally um, in your, uh, from your position as an expert in the field? What has your experience been like? And what have you seen change in the Indian mindset towards science and technology in healthcare um, across the few years? Again, you know, an excellent question in the sense that uh, when I joined engineering, the focus was on computer science. The focus was on electrical engineering. There were very few students doing anything other than these two, you know, major fields that you may call them. Over the years, uh, focus shifted to other engineering disciplines, but then computer science remained at the top. 
today you will not believe it and this is exactly why uh, this country after it fought covid after it could create its own vaccines after it could create its own diagnostic devices after it could create its own um, scale up of uh, assays required for diagnostics and you know all the healthcare system in this country people are aware that there is a huge uh, field of medical engineering out there which can have a huge impact on the healthcare space in this country and many students even though they are working in computer science even though they are working in electrical engineering even though they are working in um, chemical engineering or physics or material science and engineering or mechanical in engineering for that matter they would like to do interdisciplinary research with medical professionals in the field so today digital health has become a huge uh, area of research and especially uh, after covid because many things that we could not do uh, you know face to face now you could actually do looking at scans looking at you know uh, things remotely and and even be able to diagnose people remotely which is a big thing for this country because many of us live in remote places that do not have access to doctors do not have access to you know large hospitals so my personal view is covid not just changed the of course the you know the situation in the world it actually changed the mindset of people in this country to start looking at healthcare problems and solutions to these healthcare problems more minutely yeah um that's uh, extremely um you know insightful thank you for that dr shrivastav just one last question and we'll segue into the awards itself um this is the first set of vigyan awards ever given by the government of india um and you're one of the first recipients so again congratulations on that um but about the awards itself um when they were initially announced there was um uh, there were a couple of divisive opinions about streamlining all of the science awards um you know and bringing it all under one umbrella so uh, i wanted to ask you how does it feel to receive this award um what is uh, the honor like like just how does it feel so let me you know go one step back and say what was currently happening in the country and how we have changed the entire uh, system of giving awards initially every organization in this country was giving out awards and we know that you know i'm not going to name uh, organizations because i have got it from every organization in this country all that you see behind me is awards that have been given by you know different science ministries in this country different organizations private organizations and the biggest one is you know of course before this was the dr shanti swarup bhatnagar prize which i was the first recipient to as, as an engineer to have got it in the medical sciences domain so you know that itself was an eye opener for me that the country is now recognizing uh, medical i'll say you know i'll say medical advances by engineering people in that field and that was you know an eye opener for not just me but for the entire country then uh, there was a phase in which the country decided that you know many of these awards need to be brought under one umbrella which i personally believe has been the right step because this motivates many of us to keep working for the country first you know that's the biggest motive you know none of us are working for awards what we are working for is how our work gets uh, translated into uh, you know into the market is actually used by common people and actually benefits the common people in this country finally as a result of that if the country recognizes you by way of an award it is really heartening to see and this award you will not believe it you know there were many 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 tech, uh, award categories in this country but this is the first time that an award category has been created for technology and innovation and this is the first time that the country gave it to a person like me uh, and a vigyan shri in technology and innovation because of the impact that we have created because of the patents you know and we have filed more than 250 patents which is actually the largest number by a individual in the entire southern hemisphere you know you will not find an individual with more number of patents but the best part was that many of these patents have actually been translated into actual products which have made an impact and that's what the country recognized and i'm forever grateful to this government 
for actually recognizing technology and innovation, which will pave the way for many of us to continue doing what we are doing.